Hi, everyone. <laughs> Happy Monday, August, what is it? 17th. 17th. I think so. Uh, welcome once again. It's Monday night. Welcome to Jazz and Conversation, where we have all the best guests. Always. In the South Florida jazz community. And uh, once again, we have a an amazing artist to share with you um, with tonight. Uh, the one and only Martin Bejarano. We're going to get to know him. We're going to see a lot of different clips of him, learn about him, all about him when he was younger. Uh, but let's just hear, let's go right to him and hear him play live. Martin Bejarano.
<laughs> Killing it. <laughs> so good. So very good. So we, uh, with, yeah, he's going to get his headphones on. But in the meantime, I just wanted to, I, I forgot to mention that once again, we are uh, collaborating with all of our jazz uh, societies in South Florida. We've got the Sunshine Sunshine Jazz Organization. We have uh, South Florida Jazz and Gold Coast Jazz Society and of course the Miami Jazz Cooperative and as always we are so happy that we are collaborating and doing this all together and Martin hey, Bejarano. Wow. Thank hey. you so much for doing this awesome show that you're doing. Oh, great Man. to see you and great to hear you. You sound so good uh, and you know Ron Miller is watching and he was asking <laughs> He was asking uh, uh, where you are because he's like, the piano well, sounds amazing, he said. There's some yeah, people the, watching. The, the, you know, the offices at the University of Miami, the you new know, offices that they built a few years ago for the teachers, uh, which are really just fantastic. And, um, you know, I set up the piano this summer because I was going to record a trio album around May, but we all know what happened uh, <laughs> back then, in case, in case you mm -hmm. forgot, or, you know. You could have done a solo <laughs> piano. Well, that's exactly what I what I did. So I bought some really nice microphones. Finally, I, I set okay. up here and I was recording solo piano stuff all summer long in the hopes of maybe releasing something in the spring or winter. Oh, nice! So, Great uh, spring. Why are you going to wait so long? Because uh, I'm never happy with anything, so I'll probably redo most of what I did. <laughs> oh, that happens to you too. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, there's got to be some kind of mental condition. <laughs> You know, I know Ron's upset that, that your office is so nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ronnie. I'm sorry. Ronnie deserved a, a castle when he was teaching He here. did. He, right. ab so. he absolutely <laughs> did. Um, but there must be some kind of like brain condition that we have as musicians that, you know, we are never happy with what we've done. It always feels so much better when we're live because I guess we don't hear like the little inconsistencies. It feel, It's feeling good. It's, you know, it's sounding good to us. But man, if we know that that button is going, there is something that happens to our psyche that we hate everything. You're so right, Wendy. Yeah, um, I hate recording. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wish I could record everything live, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, Keith Jarrett talked about that a lot, how he never, I think he only recorded a couple albums in the studio. One was when Miles Davis died. He wanted to do it something right away, and he didn't have a concert lined up. But pretty much 95% of his records are live. Because to him, you know, jazz just doesn't really work in the studio, right? You know, and it's 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 I can't help but agree with that. Of course, there's some really great studio records out there, right? But, for, but for there is there, there is an artificial you know vibe happening yeah. because and it's that thing it's that thing over your head saying this is forever this is forever you know especially nowadays where everything you do is recorded and filmed and put online and available for eons and eons. Yeah, you know. yeah. I think Gazer wants to ch chime I, I, in here. I have to say, J Jim says he has no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> of course, because, see, everything he plays is awesome. So yeah, yeah. listen. And that's listen. the biggest lie you're gonna ever hear. From I've Jim been Gager. we've been recording over the summer for our for a, a new duo CD, and oh my god, it's like pulling teeth. 
It really is. And then when, because we do it live, the thing is, you know, we're kind of like, oh, I like my take. Oh, you didn't like your take? Oh, damn. You know, so we got to get the take that is like the best for both. And so, so talk arm about wrestle to see who. Who wins the arm wrestle, you get to pick the pick. Uh, take. Well, you exactly. know, the reality is he's, you know, even though I'm the the girl in the relationship, he is the diva. <laughs> so I generally am not as picky as him, so he kind of wins mostly. <laughs> well, that's very nice of you. <laughs> that's very nice. I've learned compromise. Right. Yeah. Um, so you are one of the, the few people uh, that were born and raised in Miami. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, one of the natives, the few and the proud. And where were you born? Uh, I was born in Coconut Grove, actually. Okay, so like your school, where'd you go to school? I mean, I'm I'm pretty much grew up here too, so I'm oh, just cool. curious where you went to school. And yeah, uh, I grew up in the Grove, which wasn't really the Grove like it is now. Um, right. My, my parents bought their house in 1969 for like twenty thousand dollars or something, yeah. which is crazy. Um, and I I went to uh, West Lab uh, Elementary. Oh, school, okay. Actually. At you at U of yeah, M. Right next door. Here, okay. Nice. Kind of, kind of funny and uh, really great, uh, fantastic school. And then I went to um, Southwood uh, Junior High. Okay. My, it was like an arts magnet program. Yeah. Still, still is. And then I went to New World School of the Arts after that. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. And then to U of M. Actually, to Florida State. And oh, okay. And then I did my master's at U of M. Okay. Yeah. So who was teaching at Florida State then? Uh, the te- uh, uh, piano wise. Unbelievable pianist and teacher named Bill Peterson, who's still there actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get started, Martin? Um. Well, like. Many things, it was an accident. Uh, I wanted to play drum. Well, my mom. Um, oh, can you still see me? The lights just went out. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> they have this motion sensor thing here. So <laughs> high tech. You got to talk more with your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Jazz hands. <laughs> no? <Yeah. laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, oh. So, I, I, my mom taught me some kind of basic piano stuff. I, I guess I would like kind of go on the piano when I was about six or seven and mess around and try to pick up things by ear and everything. How old were you here? Oh man. <laughs> haven't, really? haven't changed the day. <laughs> wow, look at that. Look at that jacket. That is really, it's that's pretty, something. It's pretty serious. That, uh, yeah. that is good. something. <laughs> so that was probably four years old. So okay. probably a couple years after that. Uh, so you, you, you had a piano in the house and your mom played piano. Yeah, my mom played a little bit of piano. Like she kind of knew like three or four things that she would kind of stumble through you know every every once in a while and I would go you know behind her and kind of try to pick up stuff that she played by ear so then she started teaching me some kind of basic stuff scales and how to read for about you know maybe a little less than a year when I was about seven then I uh, wanted to play baseball like every other Cuban Cuban American kid in Miami <laughs> and I quickly uh, dished the piano and then when I was about nine or ten I asked my mom if I could get drum lessons if I could get a drum set oh, wow. get drum lessons you know, pianists and drummers, that's like a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so she said, well, if you take piano lessons for a year and stick with it and you practice and everything after a year, you still you want to do drums, you can switch to drums, no problem. Oh, she's sneaky. Sneaky. <laughs> she, was, she was a smart and very sneaky lady, my mother. Uh, and um, so after a year, I asked for like a Casio keyboard instead of a drum set, and that's it. That's the rest is history. <laughs> did you, uh, so who did, did you take lessons or you were still... Yeah, at that point I started taking lessons with a, a, a relative of the family um, who was a really great teacher. And then I studied with her for a few years. And then about uh, ninth grade, I believe, I switched to study with a wonderful, amazing teacher named William Dawson, who taught at the univer- at the uh, Miami-Dade uh, North and also at the um, New World School of the Arts, high school and okay. college division. So, nice. Yeah. Let's, let's take a couple of, uh, a look at a couple of pics of you uh, in your... In your youth here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's going on there? Well, what's going on is, remember that mother I was telling you about? She made me wear a tux for my first recital. Oh, She was getting God. you prepared for, you know, so, the real and world. Was, and she was American. That's like a Cuban mom thing to do. She was totally American. <laughs> so there's no excuse well, for this. Well, you know, as, as I always say, and I know it's not quite... Uh, appropriate but she was cuban by injection so you know <laughs> not that anybody wants to think about their mom that way oh my lord i'm sorry um um so w- i mean when you were doing these recitals and stuff were you doing uh, was it classical pretty yeah, much, pretty much or? Stri- strictly classical yeah um on my own i was like playing like everyone else every other you know young piano player back then playing billy joel songs and elton john songs mm. trying to play pop and rock stuff off the radio 
Um, but this like actual recitaling and stuff and was was all classical stuff. And when did you when did the jazz bug kind of bite you? You know, funny enough, um, I. I, I used to play trumpet also from sixth grade to about ninth grade or tenth grade. Tenth was that was that so? Then would that have been at, uh, uh, at West Lab at, and at Southwood? Actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, All West right. Lab had a really great wind and strings program. Um, you know, so I started playing trumpet in fifth grade, I think, and I actually first started playing jazz on the trumpet, like playing in big huh. band when I was in seventh okay. grade. Okay. And I, I first really kind of improvised in a jazz style on the trumpet before I ever really did it on piano. Um, and then I had to get uh, an embouchure change uh, because I had a, f a funky embouchure. It was kind of li limiting me to what I could do in trumpet. And by that time, I was about to start high school. And for you trumpet players out there, you know how, what a pain it is to go through an embouchure change. <laughs> so I took the trumpet, I packed it up, and I put it away. <laughs> and uh, I, I kind of switched. My first kind of experience playing jazz on piano was at a, a wonderful summer camp called Camp Encore Coda in, uh, in uh, Sweden, Maine. And wow, it's a great camp. You, they do have classical jazz and pop and rock, and you can and I did kind of everything. It's really cool. Uh, so that was the first time that I really started to play jazz on the piano. Kind of got into chord voicings. Um, you know, I'll never forget. Uh, in one, they had like an improv class, and the, the teacher played this the Miles Davis "So What" solo, mm. and then he sang the whole thing, and I was <laughs> like. I couldn't even believe that was humanly possible. <laughs> so that camp really left an uh, impression on I me. Mean, I also met some young, really great uh, uh, kids from like New York and Boston who are pretty advanced in the jazz, uh, you know, scene in, in, in their jazz playing. So that was a, a big like influence and yeah. in, you know for me. You know, Jim Jim Gazer always says that the 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 best way to get a kid to learn more is by having other kids better than him around them, you know, and it's just, you know, it's that kind of human, you know, desire to get better or to be able to play with the big boys, you know, kind of thing. And it really, that, that competition really makes a big difference. It, it really does. And, and, it, and, and to me, it holds true forever because if I, I always want to be playing in a band where, where people are kicking my butt, you know, where I'm, I'm really being pushed, uh, because then you're not, you can't phone it in or be tired or fall back on, you know, the things that you're comfortable with. You, you really have to like, like step up to the plate. So. And, you know, every week I feel like every guest that we have on, has, you know, plays with a million people. But like, for real, you play with a million people. <laughs> Oh, you played with almost everybody we've had on the show. You know, you've uh, Daphnis and uh, and uh, gosh, almost almost every ball. Well, we did the Grammy show that had you know Brian Lynch and right, Brian and Lynch. John. So, and you've played with all of them. Uh, you're playing with our next week's guest, who we're is we're having Ignacio on next week. Oh, who is Ignacio oh, Barrow? Oh, Ignacio oh, Barrow. Yes, yes. So, so we'll be seeing a, a few clips later. Now uh, we'll pick up from you know this point in your your life and. Uh, go on, but you know probably uh, one of your most hope, high profile gigs has to have been the the Royal Haynes gig, right? Yeah, absolutely. I pretty much owe my whole career to uh, you know uh, connecting with him. And how did you connect with him? You know, like most things in the music uh, world, it was just being at the right place at the right time. Um, I moved to New York from Miami after I graduated here uh, in two thousand, like August of two thousand, I think. And um, I started playing with some guys that I knew from Miami, like Marcus Strickland and EJ Strickland, you know, those wonderful players like that. And I kind of like got into a little bit of a scene in New York uh, playing with those guys and then started playing with a lot of other people in that scene. And then just, you know, uh, just kind of dumb luck, um, Marcus had hooked up with Roy and Roy was looking to put together a band of young musicians. Partially because I think his other musicians were asking for more money, and uh, <laughs> you know that's a pretty we all know that story. Yes, so, whatever works. Yeah, and you know, quite honestly, Roy really loves to play with young. He always wants to be playing with the young guys and be right. like kind of seeing what's going on in, in the scene, uh, you know, of the moment. And uh, so, you know, like not even a year after I moved up, maybe eight or ten months, the next summer. Uh, Marcus asked me, oh, do you want to come to the new school and have a jam session with Roy Haynes? He's looking for a new mm -hmm. piano player. And I was like, um, hmm. <laughs> let me think about that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so I went and like, I, I just got so lucky. Like I knew the tunes that he called. And I mean, I know a lot of tunes, but I'm not one of those like tune smith persons <laughs> who know thousands and thousands of tunes. 
Um, and like, thank God I knew pretty much all the tunes he called. And it was so incredible to play with him. And he was such a nice guy. And we did about another session or two after that. And then he called me up to, to do a, a festival, a little festival. And ever since then, I've been playing with him. So uh, just, and what year was that? This would have been, uh, I started in the summer of 2001 playing with him. Mm. Wow. Yeah. A long That's time. amazing. Yeah. Do you miss New York or are you happy to be here or? Both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so political. Yeah. You're running for office too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, please, no. Um, you know, I, I don't miss like living in New York day to day. As we all know, it's, it can be kind of rough. Um, and, but I do miss, you know, as everyone knows, the, the, the vibe there and the, the energy and all the cliche things you hear and the, the music every night, the sure. 10 things you could see, the food, yeah. you know, that and right. I do think for musicians, it does keep you really like on your toes and really, you know, on your game, so to speak. You know, luckily, I've, I've been able to since I moved back down here back in 2009 or uh, was it? Yeah, I think 2008 or nine. Um, I, I've been I go back there quite a bit, at least four or five times a year maybe more right. to play and to do recording and stuff well, like that well well you did well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I did yeah <laughs> so we'll see how that pans out so, so it's kind of nice I feel like I got the best of both worlds I would go there I get to play see my friends get a little bit of that and then get the heck out of there yeah you know, after sure. a week so yeah well let's look at you in action with Roy Haynes and then we'll come back and talk about the that particular gig.
Sounds so good. So that's what you meant by playing with people that you feel are elevating you? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good example, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a clip that, uh, you know, we had so much fun watching. Uh, and so this, I think this may be also. Yeah, could, this may even okay. up that if it's possible. Uh, and then you have, to, you have to tell us what this was okay. like uh, for you. So <laughs> check this out, folks. I'm like sitting on watching everything <laughs> well you know it's funny that that uh clip is from the same festival we did two nights one with roy's band just the regular quartet and then that night i believe that was the first night with chick where i played about two or three numbers and then chick came out as a special guest and played the rest of the show okay so 
it started off really nerve wracking already because <laughs> I'm playing and he's like in the wings, you know, watching everything. And we started off by playing like one of his tunes. <laughs> I was like, why are we doing this? You know, like, <laughs> please don't make me play Chick Corea's tune in front of Chick Corea. <laughs> and it's a tune that's not really well known. And we kind of like transcribed it off of some different recordings and stuff. So the whole time I was thinking like, I'm sure I'm, this chords are wrong. And, you know, <laughs> Uh, so then that clip is from the encore from that mm. concert and um, when it came time to do the encore he was you know he's well he is just such an incredibly nice decent human being um, and he was nice enough to say hey why don't you come on we'll play together for the encore and that's, wow. so that's what that was and, and a little funny story about that if you notice what I'm wearing it looks like I rolled out of bed um, <laughs> It was our first uh, first or second uh, gig in, in a pretty long European tour, and they lost my luggage. Oh, my oh gosh. Boy. Yeah, so um, that was the first night, so I had to borrow some clothes from Marcus, I believe. <laughs> and uh, and then, of course, it's like, that's the one, you know, remember I said everything gets recorded and streamed. Yes. And well, there you go. So, but it was, <laughs> it, it was like, I tell, I tell everyone, it was like, I'd never been bungee jumping, bungee diving, but I, yeah. I assume it's the same thing where, you know, you're completely, you know, you know what in your pants the whole time <laughs> where it's about to happen but then once it yeah. goes it's so much fun that you don't it just you go beyond that whole fear thing right and it was so incredible and he was playing such amazing stuff as you saw yeah it just became like fun and it really did feel like he was talking to you through his music you know it didn't feel oh, yeah. like like you know one-upping or anything like that it really was no. you know like a fun I was wondering, I wonder, like, does he smell like jazz and patchouli? You know? <laughs> I don't know, I just got that feeling. <laughs> oh, my Lord. You know, I, I don't remember his scent, actually. Now Damn. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh. He is hey. a vegetarian. He eats a pretty strict, like, vegetarian diet, so maybe yeah. that gives him a particular odor. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, can we get you to play uh, another two songs for us? Two, yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, then, that would be and amazing. And then we'll come back and chat some more. Cool. All right. And while you're getting such situ situated, I'll just make a couple of things, and you just you just give us a nod when you're ready. Okay, sure, got it. Yeah. Yeah. So what I wanted to say is, of course, we have our normal uh, little thing scrolling down there, which is to support our musicians, show them a little love. Um, like I said, it's been since March and nobody has had a gig. So um, you would text the word tip jar to the number 44321 and uh, we will, you know, whatever's in there, we will we will give straight within the hour, Martin will have it in his account. It's kind of an amazing thing, this whole PayPal, Venmo, you know, uh, cash app thing. Um, but how it works, and sometimes people have told us that they, they're, they're having trouble with it, but it's, you text the word tip jar to the number 44321, and believe it or not, uh, then you get a little um, link. A link, and that's where you do it, and uh, it's safe. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to have a little bit of, uh, he could go, you know, take his family to dinner, you know, it's <laughs> on the MJC and the, uh, and the South Florida jazz and Gold Coast and all of our, our yep. sunshine jazz and everybody who's, uh, who's doing this. So, uh, but we really are here for the music. So we are going to send it to, to Martin to play his ass off. <laughs> I want nothing less. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And we'll be back and talk some more after and, this. And also, we can tell you that he's got a website, and it is just martinbeherano.com. And uh, if you are interested in finding out more about him and his music and where he might be playing, uh, I know he just did a fantastic concert um, last Friday with Jim Gazier and Tal Cohen for WDNA and at the Jazz Encounter, the wonderful Jazz Encounters program. So uh, you can find all of that, you know, probably, you know, links and different things like that. So uh, once again, the amazing Martin Beherano. You ready?
so fantastic so great uh, once again uh, you can find Martin's music at martinbeherano.com and uh, you know he's uh, playing with everybody so you probably can hardly throw a throw a stick without <laughs> finding a video that he's <laughs> or an artist that he's not played with 
<laughs> but it's amazing. Um, you know, I really wanted to ask you about your influences because I, you know, you I I've heard you play a couple of monk tunes, and you know, you've got the you know that kind of uh, the dissonance thing going on. But who were really are your like really inspired you Pian pianist pianistically pianistically yes. pianistically. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, believe it or not, the, the first person that I really, really got obsessed, as we do, with uh, was Keith Jarrett. Um, you know, uh, of course, especially in okay, he's pretty of okay. Course. That guy, he's pretty, he's pretty good. <laughs> Although, you know what? I think you could have taken more of the grunting and facial distortions <laughs> from him. You seem you, you seem I a little try. too relaxed when you're students, playing. Don't, don't imitate <laughs> Keith Jarrett. Uh, just imitate the way he plays. Don't imitate him. Um, but, uh, exactly. You, yeah, you know, exactly. funny enough, um, uh, you know, and when I was kind of like in high school and, and college, like he was, of course, pretty, pretty big. Um, and uh, my classical teacher is the, right. actually the first person that turned me on to him. Uh, because he loved his uh, solo <laughs> piano improvisation records, like Korn Concert and uh, sure. Brahmin Lazane. Right. And Korn the, Concert, the, yeah. The, the, the big Japanese 10 CD one, I forgot what that's called. The Sun Bear, Sun Bear, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sun Bear. Um, so that's, yeah. that's where I first heard of them. And then I, and then I got into his trio playing. And then I kind of went, like, I guess most people that weren't born in 19, you know, 40s or something, I kind of went backwards uh, from, like, uh, Chick Corea, of course, a huge influence on me. Keith Jarrett, uh, Herbie Hancock, of course, those are like the three, you know, in that era that a lot of pianists uh, mm -hmm. get into. Or the, what the is it? The Trinity. Uh, yeah. Trinity. The Trinity yeah. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Holy Piano so Trinity. I kind of worked my way backward, <laughs> and, but funny enough, I got into Monk pretty early, um, and it was the first solo I ever transcribed. First jazz solo I ever transcribed was. Wow. Actually, it's a monk solo? solo on a monk album. Yeah, okay. on monk's track. Got it. Um, so, uh, but besides, so those are you know those are four of my really really big influences. Later on, when I started to dig deeper, I was really influenced by Ahmad Jamal quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, uh, players like McCoy Tyner, and um, uh, then later I, I kind of kept going back and back, and then I got really into like the, the really swinging pianists like Wynton Kelly and Red Garland and uh and uh th that whole scene and then later bud powell mm. uh and and those you know funny enough like when i first tried listening to some bud powell and early charlie parker records the sound quality was so rough it was kind of turned me off yeah to it, it was hard to listen to um but so th those are those are some of my main foot and and of course a lot of the modern people you know like gonzalo rubica was a big influence on me brad meldow the first piece mm. i played was kind of like a a piece I wrote that was kind of like tribute to Brad Meldow, kind of his style. Is that recorded at all? They had a we. Yeah, it's actually recorded. It's uh, as a trio on uh, the my two albums ago in an album entitled Potential Energy. Okay. So I'm trying to trying to play it as a solo piece. It's still kicking my butt, but. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's good. Hey, I'm curious. Did you ever keep up with the drums or not? Because I know Chick is a good drummer. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I did. I in finally in college, like my senior. I mean, I used to mess around every time I could find a drum set. But in my senior year in college, and if any of my students are listening, don't do this. But <laughs> I basically bought a cheap drum set for a hundred bucks, and I like sat in my room like every day for hours playing, mostly playing along to records, just putting a record on and playing. And I roomed with a drummer for a couple of years, so he kind of showed me some little basic stuff. So, um, uh, fun fact: I actually played a gig. <laughs> what with, with Gary Keller? Wow! Wow! wow. Now, now let me ask you something. Was that call one of those? Hey, I called everybody. I called everybody. Can you do this gig <laughs> on <Obviously>. drums? <laughs> okay. Well, I you know I just how'd, how'd that go? Oh, I did. He, it. Did, he ever, <laughs> did he ever? Did he ever? Did he ever call <laughs> you back? <laughs> okay. Well, never mind then. <laughs> I did. I did get a text from somebody asking uh, who you root for when FSU plays U of M. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I went to both schools, and my brother I know. Is, a, is a Gator. So imagine that. I don't know mm. So yeah. I tend to root for Florida State, but when they're, I, I root for them separately, both to succeed. Right. But when they but play, when they play together, I root yeah. for Florida State. Okay, that's I'm that's that's sure. fair. <laughs> we won't let anybody else know. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to scroll through a few pictures here with with Roy because clearly you know you were you traveled quite a bit with him and you had a chance to 
uh, play with and meet a lot of great musicians and, and play great venues. So sure. maybe you can tell us about these pictures as they come up. Sure. Yeah, so there we got Roy. There's Roy. That's pretty recent, I would say. Uh, you know, that video you showed, believe it or not, he was about 80 years old in that video. That Unbelievable. 15 years ago. Almost. Wow. So imagine that. Here he looks like he's, that's about maybe four or five years ago, and that looks like the, the Green Room uh, Dizzy's Club in New York City. And still doing it. And uh, still doing it. And doing it. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, where is that? I don't know where that Doesn't is. Doesn't matter. Just another great gig with him. Another great, <laughs> I would say, yeah, that was probably about seven or eight years ago, I think. And so this one you have uh, written, playing with. Oh, yeah, boy. The great Ron Carter back there scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> Why? He's a very intimidating uh, guy. I don't know, Nikki, if you ever got a chance to meet him. I have not, no. Yeah, here he is again, actually. This is the Newport Jazz Festival and this, uh, this thing. This is probably maybe 10 years ago or something. Um, yeah, he's just really intimidating. Like, he's wow. very regal and he's like, you know... <laughs> So he kept winking at me during <laughs> that show at the Blue Note, and I couldn't figure out whether it was a good wink or a bad wink. <laughs> Are you a good wink? Yeah. <laughs> okay. you know, Either he liked what you were playing, or he, he's winking like, maybe next time you'll yeah, get it. Like you, know? Time, you know, <laughs> as, as Nikki knows real well, you know, Ron was very famous for, for subbing out changes and playing alternate roots and stuff. So we're playing these tunes we didn't really rehearse at all. Right. And uh, he's just playing all these things, and I'm like et trying so hard to catch him. And so I'm, I'm hoping that the wink was like, "Yeah, you caught him," or the wink was like, no, "Sorry, buddy." You're yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you could have winked back to give him like, "Hey, no, you're playing wrong changes." Right? <laughs> no, all yeah, right. That's well. not gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> I'm just wondering, is that really how it's supposed to be? Like trying to intimidate people, and you know, maybe like, he was. Maybe it was the friendly wink. Maybe we don't it was know. okay. I'm going, I'm going with that he was happy with the situation. That's what I, I think, tell myself. I think you should. I think you I should. I can't imagine how he wouldn't be. And, <laughs> and so was uh, this a sit-in from Pat? This was actually an, uh, a two nights we did with him. Uh, uh, one or two nights. I don't remember exactly. Um, and this was maybe the third time we played with him. The first time is kind of an interesting story. Um, we were playing just quartet at Birdland for, you know, like the four or five night run. And like on the third night I show up and there's like a guitar rig on the stage. And I'm like, that's weird. And I thought, well, maybe there was an opening band or an app. Sometimes you do things in the afternoon, you know, uh, during the weekend up at Birdland. And then uh, I mentioned it to someone and they said, oh no, Pat Metheny is gonna play with you guys tonight. Wow. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, and he's one of my heroes. You yeah. Know, for sure. Um, both as a player and as a composer, it's everything. Um, so, were you influenced? Was, were you influenced at all by Lyle Mays? Uh, a little bit, not not quite so much. I wasn't quite into that that uh, the Matheny group stuff. Okay. I was always into the other thing, but I mean, Lyle was an incredible, you know, pianist and composer and arranger for sure. Yeah. Well, you can always tell Pat by his uh, his posture. <laughs> you know, he's got the like, you know, the, the yeah. posture, the hair, and the t-shirt. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the three things you can. Uh, now, uh, I'm wondering, did he wink at you during this performance? <laughs> he did not wink. Okay. He was actually super, super cool. Um, okay. Oh, my gosh. He wrote a special tune just for the band, like a little blues, which was really amazing. So I have a little sheet music that says my name on it. Like He gave me like my own chart with my name oh, on nice. it. Oh, nice. And I thought that was like, I mean, to him, he was probably just like, you know, he just does it automatically. But to me, I was like, oh, my God. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Fanboy. Uh -huh. All right, got it. But he didn't wink at me, but he did tell me, he says, you know, uh, don't worry about comping until I give you a look. And then you can start comping. Oh, my like, gosh. Okay, that's what I'll do then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was wonderful. What a great experience. That's so cool. And then you guys were on uh, Letterman, oh, maybe? you know what? Yeah. Somehow, somehow that uh, that didn't end up oh. as a JPEG. So you were in the Letterman show. We'll we'll uh, yeah, take, take your word for it. Yeah. And anyway, so those were some picks from from your uh, stint with Roy. And I'm sure you have a million stories and many more artists that you played with. But I remember you telling me that Roy is just a super cool guy to to work with. Yeah, he's an unbelievable human being. Um, I always say that you know I play with him 
almost 20 years and he's never told me what to play how to play you know the only thing he ever said was that that very first gig uh, afterward he said um hey man you know nice job great job he goes just do me one favor and help me out sometimes <laughs> uh-huh wow and that's a little tiny sentence and like immediately i understood what what he was talking about you know and it was i was like kind of it was the first night i was like i'm gonna play all my can I curse on Facebook? Is that sure? Go for it, okay. man. I'm gonna play all my shit, and <laughs> I'm gonna try to wow Roy Haynes, which is the yeah. dumbest thing you could possibly ever try to do. <laughs> right, you right. Know, for obvious reasons. So, um, and, and that, like, that's all it took, and I, I got it. And after that, I really tried, you know, for a long time to just get into what he was playing and how he was doing it, and it was he never told me another thing again. It's just that's a, amazing. Amazing you know, guy. I love generous people like that. You know, they they are the cream of the crop. They play well, with everybody, and they're yeah. still a. They're still learning, yeah. and b. They're still giving. But not not just that. Then it makes you want to play. You know, like you, we always play our best. But you know, when somebody's like that, it's like you you go out of your way to play better for them because yeah. you know you you they appreciate it, and you know they appreciate it. So Patrick Lopez wants to know if you're still playing the trumpet. Oh, I see these comments. Thank you for the nice comments <laughs> and the funny ones too. I, my trumpet is still in its soft case buried in my garage somewhere. I haven't touched it in years. So, well, you know. he, he's wiping Sorry, his brow. Sorry, he's wiping. <laughs> um, so I, I have seen you play with a couple of singers, both Kate Reed and uh, and we have a video uh, of you playing with the great Roxana Ahmed. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I feel sorry for you. Uh, no, I, I feel sorry for you that we haven't played together, but, uh, no, I, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I was going to say, I, no, I, I was going to say, you know, I, I, well, if you I, ever I, need a drummer, I hope there you go. <laughs> hey, Jim, we'll, we'll call, we'll call Martin for, uh, for some drumming. There you go. <laughs> No, but I do. I do hope that one day I, I, I get to work with you because uh, I, I really, I really appreciate uh, how you've accompanied singers. And I did want to show um, the uh, a video uh, with Roxana. Is there anything you want? I know this is Jume Negrita. Is there anything you want? How set it up or in any way? Or? Sure. And thank you. You're such a fantastic singer. You're in the. You and Jim's, you know, recording I have and heard you many times is always really inspirational. So I would, it would be very nerve wracking to to play with you because of the, the music that you and Jim make. You know, well, so. you know what's funny is I, I'll have singers come uh, call me sometimes, or I'll see them. And I'm like, they're like, you know, I called Jim uh, for a gig. I hope you don't mind. And I'm just like, <laughs> uh, I'm like, no, you know, if you know, whatever. I said, but just know that the day after the gig, I will call him and say, did she make you feel the way I make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. so it's always fun i mean i you know really the whole point of this whole our whole community and the way it's supposed to be is that we all are giving and loving and and Absolutely. supportive yeah. that's how you, you know you hope but uh, okay yeah so back to roxana sure so i mean i love playing with singers it's the hardest thing in the world to me uh playing solo and playing with singers to me are the two most difficult things and Roxana, I just adore playing with. Mm. Uh, talk about another generous, nice person. She's just so, such a sweetheart. So wonderful. So wonderful. She's so talented um, and uh, just so musical, you know? Yeah. Uh, a lot of times it's really hard to get. I actually find it's hard to get to some of the musical kind of points, emotional and musical points with instrumentalists. It's harder for me to do that than with a singer, than with a really great singer. You know, so Roxana is fantastic. We've been working together for at least uh, five, six, seven years now, um, and uh, we are recording an album this past oh, good. year. We've been doing a bunch of stuff, some of my original stuff, some crazy stuff that she's singing, some Hinostera classical music that she's singing uh, with piano and drums, some really creative stuff, and some of her wonderful uh, original music. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Gabriel, Argentina. <laughs> And almost as if he knew what was going to happen, Errol Rakopov writes this. I'm sure he was talking about Jim, you, yeah. and Wendy, but uh, incidentally, yeah. something's you coming go. up. There you yeah, go. So, good job, Errol. You have, you're very good. <laughs> so this clip is from a, a, an interesting concert. I had so much fun doing this concert. And it's, uh, like Errol just said, two pianos and vocalists. Mm. Um, and it was sponsored by the Dranoff Two Piano Foundation, which is a wonderful organization that I've that been a part, kind of uh, partnered with quite a bit recently. And um, we was going to be just two pianos at first, and then they were asking, well, could we throw a singer to the mix? And I said, 
Absolutely, and I know exactly who I want to ask to do it. So um, this video is uh, an arrangement that I did actually uh, for Ignacio's record, trio record. Okay. Um, of the old Cuban uh, standard or whatever you want Lullaby. To Lullaby, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Drume Negrita. <clears throat> um, and it's, uh, we kind of arrange it for two pianos and voice. Oh, very cool. And you want, you want to introduce the other piano player? Oh, yeah. Sorry, of course. <laughs> the other piano player is a, a monster pianist who... Uh, was a master student of mine, one of my first master students. Imagine that, having this guy for your student. Um, I had him and, and Emmett Cohen were like my first two students. Wow. So I was like, teaching, I was like, man, teaching is going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, I'm talking about the great Kemuel Roy, uh, wonderful Cuban uh, pianist. Um, and um, I was so happy that he could do this concert and we, had, we just had so much fun playing together. Great, let's watch. Yeah. Mala negrita, se le sale lo pie de la cunita y la negra merced ya no sabe qué hacer. Tu drume negrita, que yo va a comprar nueva cunita y va a tener capital. Si tu drume yo te traigo un mamey bien colorado. Si tu drume yo te traigo un babalá. Thank you. 
Vernon. Came well, came well. Both of you, come on. And that sounds great. That's a, that's a nice concept. I like it. Roxana. Yeah, it was. Roxana, too. She has like this very like throaty, you know, rich, but also like very precise voice. I mean, I really, I really love the way she sings. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. That's a great description. <laughs> I love, hey, Ronnie, I love Ronnie. I know, uh, he's, he's, he's going for it tonight. Uh, <laughs> I Listen, I told Ron when we get back to uh, to uh, playing live that we are going to do a night that features all Ron Miller music. And uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm extending the invitation for you to be there and play one of his I'm tunes there. and, and ar- arranging absolutely. it. And that would be so much fun. Absolutely. Ronnie was a big influence on me compositionally. I took his composition class and playing his tunes and uh, you know, just the kind of harmonic things that, that, that he was, was into and that he shared with us were really, really super helpful and influential to me. So great to see you here, Ronnie. I'll play your music any day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, you know, he doesn't even realize like the, the kind of residual uh, impact that he's right. had on generations because, you know, not just when he was teaching, but now that you're teaching and, and you know, your so students look. will... So it's yeah. kind and of an the legacy in- gets passed on. Absolutely, sure. we're yeah. still playing his tunes and have you know in combos and stuff here at school. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What? Um, so we got some more pictures. Yeah, a few Maybe more we pictures. can. Uh, here's with the great Ignacio Berro, who yes. is going to be our guest next week. So for those of awesome. you out there listening, please come back next week. Yeah. Well, and you know what's funny is we were going to play a clip. Uh, but it will happen to be, be Ergen. So. Oh, that's right. I didn't think about that. Sorry. But that's okay. We'll play it next week. Okay. That's right. It'll be on his. Show. It'll be on his show for sure. Okay. So you'll be once again, you know, infiltrating on somebody else's gig. So here's a couple <laughs> clips with. Uh, I guess this was in Louisville. Yes. Oh, with Ignacio. Yeah, really great uh, theater out there, Fitton Center, I believe, is what it's called. It's Ignacio Trio. That's Josh Allen, actually. U M. Oh, look at that. U M on bass. Yeah. yeah. Shares, shares my birthday. Just saying. Oh, oh nice. that's true. Yeah. 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 Listen, it's always fun. On, on April 29th, Josh, uh, Jamie, Jamie Owsley, Owsley and I share like, our birthday. It's like it's the, the base like, oh, day wow. or something. It's <laughs> yes. crazy. That's uh, cool. And then this was also, we had him on our show, John about, Kreisberg. About a month and a half ago, Jonathan was oh, our guest. Oh, I didn't and, even know that. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, we did, a, we did a special European edition, so it was a Friday afternoon instead of a Monday night. Uh, oh, I got you. Okay. But uh, he's fantastic, oh, too. Oh, and so. that was yeah. a great outfit, too, man. You guys sound so, so good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, it's funny. You know, Jonathan and I went to high school together. Um, he was a couple years older than me, so we, we really didn't like hang out or anything, and he was so far <clears> ahead of me. <throat> you know, in the jazz, musically speaking, it was like, I didn't even, you know, uh, and then we never really like stayed in touch or anything. And then maybe, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, uh, we, he saw me play with Roy at the Monterey jazz festival, I think. And he didn't even know that I had was playing jazz or anything. Oh, wow. Wow. So we kind of hooked up there and he said, Oh man, we should play together someday. And we kind (laughs) of like tried to work it out and it took a while but finally I've been touring with his band for about a year and a half now and it's really just they're slamming yeah slamming band. and I guess you guys were ready to do stuff when the whole pandemic hit right yeah actually yeah. they had a tour in Asia that I bowed out of because it was things were starting to go south and mm. you know talking with my wife and everything I'm like yeah. mm, maybe. and then right after that tour is when when the when the shit hit the fan wow so you did the right thing yeah so <laughs> And then, yeah, we had a bunch of stuff. Yeah, the whole year of work canceled. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so crazy. So we're going to go out with a uh, clip of your trio. But uh, tell us about how you, you know, what the idea was with your trio. And there was a bass player that's on that video whom I'm not aware of, Edward Perez. Yeah, Edward's a great (laughs) bass player. He's been in my trio since I did my first record way back in uh, whenever that was, 2007, I guess. Um, and he's a, a New York based guy he's from Texas originally. He's really super, um, he does so many things great. He's a great jazz player, straight ahead player. He's a great Latin player. He's kind of an expert in Afro Peruvian music. He has a mm. killing Afro Peruvian big band that just got nominated for a Grammy, actually, his, their record uh, in New York called the La Terraza Big Band. Mm. Um, and um, I just, yeah, just, he's, I just love, love playing with him. And, and the clip Ludwig. were right, well, of course, okay. Ludwig Alfonso on drums. Yeah. Before before we play that, so you have all together, you've got uh, how many records out? I have three records out as the leader. And they're all trio? Um, they're trio, and the the, um, the the second one has some quartet on it also. And But but next year we can look forward to uh, a well, solo, solo record. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 
Maybe. Me, if if he can uh, choose a take. Yeah. yeah. If I can decide on one of the 75 takes that Aaron Listen, oh, I, 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 can, I can volunteer to come and just weed through them all. That's probably the best thing. Just like have, have somebody else, else do them. it. Yeah. And then exactly. Just, you know. Exactly. Just somebody that you trust. Just like, you know, yep. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, the, the interesting thing about this is is when you finally put it out there, when you listen, when you go back like maybe two years later or something and you listen to it, it sounds good. Like, do you find that with your stuff? Like things that maybe you were like, yeah. man, I don't know. But then you go back and listen, you're like, you know what? It's it's good. The distance. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's funny. It kind of goes in waves for me. So like, I'll like, I'll say like, oh, that's great. And then I'm like, oh, that's just horrible. And then like, <laughs> I hear it again. I'm like, oh, that's, no, that's actually, it's pretty good actually. Yeah. Say, no, that's just yeah. horrible. So like, <laughs> Honestly, to be honest, it kind of depends on how it happens. Right. You know, how I hear it or how it, I happen to be listening to right. it. Um, usually, if, it, if I'm not expecting it, then, I, then I'm kind of happier with it. I'm like, oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. Right. If I like, actually put something on like of mine, then I hate it pretty much. <laughs> well, well so, so solo record in the coming year, yeah. uh, possibly Roxana's record, if you got, I don't Yes. We're Is it all recorded or? I think we're all, it's all recorded, but maybe one or two songs. So okay. I think she's looking to release that in the spring as well. I, I really hope so. And so, with Jonathan's band, we just released a CD also a couple, right before the pandemic. Right. Actually. Okay. Yeah. So 2021 is going to be a year of good music already. We know it. Yeah. Let's hope, let's hope so. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, now the clip that we're going to see, it's a um, one third of a suite. Correct. Yeah. So um, I was fortunate to uh, win a a composing ensemble development grant from the Chamber Music America, which is a great organization. Yeah. Um, And so uh, as part of the grant, you you know, you're supposed to compose something. So I composed a a three movement suite called the Cuban American Suite. Um, So I'm, you know, my mom, like I said before, was 100% gringa and my dad was Cuban. So I I don't speak Spanish too well. I play Cuban music, but kind of like, kind of like an, an NBA player that plays baseball, you know. As she says with an accent. You with play. Accent, you yeah. play. <laughs> you know, I'm not like I wouldn't put myself in a category with someone like Kim Well or something. So, um, um, so I wanted to write some music that was kind of like both things, you know, not trying to be Cuban music, not trying right. to be American music, but just kind of like whatever kind of came out of my head thinking about those two worlds and this is the third movement of that uh, suite it's called yo no bailo which means i don't dance and why is it called that because i'm a <laughs> terrible salsa dancer <laughs> like most a lot of musicians mm-hmm. and uh and the, the meter of the tune and the rhythm is really syncopated and kind of wacky so it's pretty hard to dance to i would imagine so. Here it is. Right. martin bejerano trio yo no bailo
toe tapper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're saying you can't dance to that. I totally was doing it. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I miss playing with those guys. I'm, and playing. I'm sure. Stuff. And that that is uh, all of your trio records are with them, the same trio? Yeah, same rhythm section, yeah, absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Well, uh, you have wasted a, a good hour and a half of your life, Martin. <laughs> you can't get it back. <laughs> you can't get it back now. You can't not get it back. <laughs> But I have to say, it was so much fun uh, getting to know you. I don't. I, I think maybe you know we've never played together, and I really haven't had a chance to like talk to you. You're you are younger than me, so I you know I didn't go to school with you. And um, but it's been it's been very it's been very fun oh, yeah. and delightful. Great great catching up, and I'm sure everyone out there listening has been enjoying it too. Uh, that's probably the best part of this show is that we get to find out about people like you, and they get to a little insight into who you are and what you've done and the background stories and all that. So thank you for taking the time to do this. Absolutely. Thank thank you guys. And yeah, Wendy, it's nice to talk to you. I know we just, you know, certain people you just don't cross paths with and you don't get a chance to talk. So this was a really yeah. cool way to do that. Um, and uh, of course, Nikki, you know, uh, one of the greatest bass players I know, period. Oh, and, thank uh, you. <laughs> and was such a, you know, I used to play with him when I was really young and didn't know squat. So I was lucky to, to get a chance to play with him. So and, you guys were probably like equal at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but don't. Yeah, but very, very, very lovely, lovely, good, well done. <laughs> so this was really fun, and, uh, and I, I see a lot of people in the in the comments section. Thanks for the funny yeah. and nice comments, and some old friends of mine, Francesca and Pilo and Josh Cosette, one of my old uh, students, and all of these musicians from Miami. Of course, it's really great. My old teachers, Ronnie and Gary, yep. Lindsay. Gabriel. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great, great to see all those. Yes. People. So fun. And like I said, we look forward to your music next year and seeing you live and in person, which we cannot wait for that to happen. I have your commitment now for our Ron Miller music night. I'm there. So <laughs> you can't back out now. I will not. I will not. Thank and you so much for having me. And, and thank you for this. It's a great thing you guys are doing. It's so cool. I love it. And uh, I'm honored to be a part of it. So thank you guys. Uh, well, we'll see you again next week because you'll be, you know, probably. Uh, you'll be on video. On video <laughs> on well, I'm Ignacio's. Gonna hop, I'm going to hop on and, and say all the bad stories about Ignacio. There oh, you oh, go. Please oh, do. please, please yes. Please do. Please, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, <laughs> Martin. Hey, guys, Martin thank Bejarano. Good night. Thank, thank good night, you so guys. much. You know, so you wasted again another <laughs> Monday night with it's us. It's the best thing yeah. anyone can possibly be doing. Listen, on a Monday we night. appreciate it so much, and we—I know our musicians appreciate it, and um, and I do think it's important to just keep the music going uh, and keep the habit of live music in your life because it's very easy to, uh, you know, make new habits and forget about the old ones, and uh, and music is the best honestly you know if i wasn't doing it i would be listening to it and i listen to it a lot but um want to let you know uh that next week we have a very fun show uh we've got the amazing ignacio berroa and in case you don't know who he is uh if you've been hiding under a rock or or I don't know, you just uh, new new to the scene. He has been the drummer for Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Hayden, and of oh, course, Gonzalo Rubalcaba and Eliani Elias. So, he's so many things, place. and he's a fantastic educator, and he's an amazing drummer and a nice guy. So we're gonna learn more about him. Uh, the following week, I have to tell you, we are going to be featuring <laughs> Joe Donato. And uh, this is a show that we, we, we've already started planning it because Joe is such a character. And honestly, I don't even think one show was enough for Joe. But uh, I'm excited because he wants to talk. He wants to bring us into his yard where he has fantastic plants. And we're hoping he might, might do a cooking demonstration. And he's got some new lyrics that he's working on just specifically for the show. So I think it's going to be a hoot. Oh, yeah. And a holler. <laughs> and uh, so, and then uh, I think on uh, Labor Day, we're going to feature the amazing F music of Ethel Ennis. And uh, our one and only Brenda Alford is going to be uh, hosting that and kind of taking us through because uh, she's a hometown hero from, uh, from uh, Brenda's hometown of Baltimore. Maryland and uh, she's fantastic and a lot of people don't know uh, her music and she's just a really great singer so we're we've got a lot of great stuff coming up and we are so happy that you are with us so I have to tell you this from the Miami Jazz Cooperative family from uh, 
South Florida Jazz, from the Gold Coast Jazz Society, and from the Sunshine Jazz Organization. We thank you so much, and we hope you have a fantastic week. Stay safe. Good night.